Within the Dart language tour, there are a few important concepts, uh, so important that the authors of the Dart documentation have included a section called important concepts. These are things to keep in mind, uh, to, to remember, to hold on to. Okay, um, so as you learn the Dart language, um, be aware, cognizant of these particular concepts. First one, everything you can place in a variable is an object. If you come from the uh, Ruby programming language, um, there's a saying in Ruby that everything is an object. Okay, and they go on to say every object is an instance of a class. Okay, even numbers, functions, and null are objects. And then this is kind of tricky. With the exception of null, all objects inherit from the object class. Let's see if we can look at this in uh, DartPad and, and break this down a little bit. Okay, let's um, just refresh this. No, let's new pad. There we go. Yes. Uh, Dart. Thank you. Okay. Everything is an object. Let's get rid of this. So we have our main function. Um, if everything is an object, that means, for example, the variable, um, let's say puppy equals Waldo. Okay, this is a, um, a puppy variable. It holds this, the value Waldo. And we can print puppy. There it is. Okay, <laughs> that works. Now, uh, what is the type? Well, it evaluates to a string, uh, but we haven't specified that. We can also say it's a string. Uh, this is the same thing. So puppy is, is an object. Everything's an object um, of type string. Ultimately, it inherits from object, okay, so we can be more generic and say maybe maybe puppy is a um, is not Waldo but is um, simply true. Okay, let's see if we make it null though. There is that null exception. Okay, so this is interesting. Let's look at this error. So we got an error message at compile time and at runtime uh, because the compilation failed. Uh, the value null can be assigned to a variable of type object. Object is not nullable. I think we may see something like that eventually. Okay, and that works. Um, and we'll see they actually have a, a section in the important concepts about just that. Uh, but earlier they said, with the exception of null, even though it says null is an object, um, it's not an instance of an object class because it doesn't inherit. And so that's why we saw that, uh, that error message specifically for null. Okay. All right. Okay, we are currently on um, Dart 2.13, I, I think. And so null safety was introduced, which is why we were able to do that little um, question mark after the object. Okay, although Dart is strongly typed, strongly typed means um, it, I think that means it knows about the type at compilation time. Um, let me just confirm. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's not an actual thing. Yeah, you have strong typing, dynamic, static, and weak. So let's see, I'm familiar with Ruby. Ruby is semi-strongly typed, I guess, and dynamic. Um, now you can, you know, assign the, the var keyword and have a dynamic type. Um, 
but I think it's going to evaluate at compile time as best it can. I think that's what that means. So type annotations are optional because Dart can infer types. So even though it's inferring it, you, you can't change it on the fly at runtime. I think that's what it means by, by strongly typed. Okay, so for example, even though I'm inferring that this puppy is Waldo, I'm inferring that it's a string, there's an analyzer going on behind this, the scenes all the time, right? Doing this ahead of time compilation. Um, that will tell me, like, I can't reassign the value of 5. Is that true? Okay, so at compile time it said you can't do this um, because the variable has already been strongly typed. Um, I think is of that is like strictly typed, but yeah, strongly typed is, is the, the jargon that's, that's used, so it's better to get accustomed to that. Okay. Yeah, it can infer types. Uh, so in the code, the number is referred to as uh, a type int. In the code above, in the code above. Okay, they're referring to this other example. I think that's the only time they refer to that. Okay, so this is, I think this is the key concept. Type annotations are optional because Dart can infer types. That's the important concept. It can infer types. Uh, but remember, it's strongly typed. Those are the two things. Strongly typed, but you can infer them. If you enable null safety, and I think after Dart 2.1.2, or 2.12, um, I think that's the default, something you want. That's something other new languages have, uh, like Swift, I believe, has that as well. Um, if you're new to programming, like sometimes you go to try to use a variable in your code, but it doesn't have a value um, where you expect to have a value. <laughs> and then your code crashes or your program crashes, your, the app on your phone dies all of a sudden. Uh, you want to be able to enable uh, null safety to, to handle those scenarios. So variables can't contain null unless you say they can. So earlier we said object couldn't contain null unless we said it could. Okay. And we had an error. Okay. Even something like, say, this might be different. This might give us a different error because null isn't an integer. Okay. Int is also not nullable. So we have null safety. Um, see, that worked. Yeah, we see we have null safety turned on down here. If we turn it off, um, it's giving us an error that the non-nullable language feature has to be enabled. Yeah, minimum SDK constraints to 2.12. Okay, so let's turn back null safety so we're operating on the latest. Uh, now this works. Okay, if you don't have that little like optional thing, like it's optionally null in addition to being an integer, um, okay, let's go back. Variables can't contain null unless you say they can. You can make a variable nullable by putting a question mark at the end of its type. That's what we just did. Okay. <clears throat> okay, a variable of type int, question mark, might be an integer or it might be null. Uh, here we've just explicitly said it is null, but... Um, Maybe there's a condition where we don't know if between the time we declare this, this variable uh, and the time it's actually used by the program, here it's just printing it, like does it actually get set? Um, does it not? And in fact, if we just run this, what happens? So it kind of just like returns null by itself. So maybe in question mark puppy, like just declaring with it out assigning a value, maybe that's shorthand for assign null to it. Okay. If you know that an expression never evaluates to null, but Dart disagrees, 
So we know that it's never going to evaluate to null, but for some reason, like the Dart analyzer can't pick that up. Um, so like this, we know it's never going to be null. And we're like, dang it, I, I know this isn't going to be null. Like, seriously, let me, let me, um, let me run my program. Have faith in me, Dart. <laughs> okay. You can add a bang. This is the exclamation point. The bang operator to assert that it isn't null and throw an exception if it is. Okay. I think like that will have no effect because the receiver can't be null. Okay, that didn't work. So where do you put it? Int x equals something with a bang. Does that do anything? I don't think that does anything. That's not good syntax. That doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's bad syntax. That doesn't do anything. Okay. Not nullable, or nullable, but not null int. And that's not even defined. Okay. So I need these documents annotated for me a little bit apparently. Because I don't exactly know how to throw that. You know, I was expecting something like that. The receiver can't be null. But what if I said it can? Then it's okay? I thought that was the whole point of not using that. Hmm. Look at that. Uncaught type error. Okay, so now it's throwing the exception. This is what it said. Right here. If you know the expression can never evaluate to null, but it actually, like, you know, they had faith in me, but I, I, I didn't follow through, um, it throws an exception. Okay, so it was trying to say two string of null. All right, that's a little that's a little deep for me even. So sometimes you just gotta move on because uh, we we may come across this in a later context when we're working with stuff, um, and it's okay to not fully understand everything the first pass. Next concept: when you want to explicitly say that any type is allowed. Use the type object with a question mark. Um, optional, optional of type object or an optional object, I think is how you would say that. Or object optional. Um, okay. If you must defer the type checking until runtime, use dynamic. Okay. So, so in this case, let's say we have a um, a list of things. Uh, let's call it um, things. There we go. Okay, we have one. We have uh, Waldo again shows back up, and then we have true and null, something like that. Now this list of things, we're like, well, what are these things? We just want to print them out because we're doing something with our things. Okay. Now specifically here, it said. Um, use object optional or object. So this, this is a list of objects as the type. Except null. Remember that can't be. So what if I do this? Okay. So that allows that to happen. So now null can be part of this list. Got rid of that because maybe you wouldn't have that. You could say a list of objects. And so it's it's analyzing it ahead of time. 
Um, if we don't, here's what it said. If you def defer the type checking, because remember Dart is, is strongly typed, defer it until runtime, special type dynamic. So this makes it operate more like a Ruby language where you're not going to know ahead of time. Okay, and so behind the scenes, uh, the, the Dart interpreter, if you will, um, you know, running the program is going to check this at runtime instead of compile time. Cool. Okay. Next concept. Dart supports generic types like a list of integers or a list of objects of any type except null. The one thing I don't understand is why they call this generic types because this is a list of specific types, a list of integers. This seems more generic, a list of objects. Um, I think this word generic has its own special meaning in programming, but I'm not familiar enough with it to know what that means, generic types. Um, Yeah, just <laughs> if they're using a list in both examples, just know you can be as specific as an integer or you can be as generic as an object. Remember to put your question mark there if one of those objects in your list might be null. Okay. Dart supports top level functions such as main as well as functions tied to a class or object, static and instance methods, respectively. You can also create functions within functions, nested or local functions. Hmm. Okay. So I think you might say that functions are first class citizens in the Dart language. Um, yeah. And then when functions are in a class or in an object, tied to a class or object, static instance methods. Okay, let's break that down a little bit. So let's say we have a class dog. It has a, a function called bark and with a void return type. Okay, all it does, wait, do I need to? Yes, I do. Still getting used to this. Okay. So the bark method prints print wolf. Okay, so that's what this does. You know, if we were to say um, var dog equals dog, right? Isn't that how you initialize a dog? Yeah, it isn't used. We're going to use it now. We are going to say dog dot bark. Okay. So first thing we should do, so it's going to assign this list of objects, which is from before. We get a dog, instance of a dog object, and then we say bark. That's going to print wolf, so we're expecting wolf and then this array, or list. Okay, and there it is. The important takeaway, the concept, is that the function of an object, an instance method, okay, so here's our class. Whenever we get an instance of a dog, this is how you say new dog, okay, that's another way to do it. I think that's valid, valid code. <clears throat> if you like being explicit, do that, but I think newer versions uh, don't use that because it's just like this is the dog class and this is it looks like it's kind of like a function, honestly. Um, but that's how you new it up, as some people say. Okay, so that's an instance method that the, the dog can use. I don't know how to make a static. Maybe you do it like this. Static void. Um, let's call it breed. Oops. Okay. Descended from wolves. OK. 
Okay, so far no errors. Now, the difference is this keyword static. Can I say dog.breed? I don't think so. And it's gonna it's gonna tell me ahead of time, I bet. Yeah, static method breed can't be accessed through an instance. Okay, however, I bet I can say dog.breed. Wolf descended from wolves. That. Is that how you spell descended? It's not. It should be though, because that's just extra complexity. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the static method. So it, so for my background in Ruby, this would just be a class method. Okay. Where we would <laughs> in Ruby we'd say self dot something. So we, instead of doing this, it would just be like self dot breed, and we would expect when you call dog dot breed, like that's what that is. Or you could also just say like dog, right? But if I update the class name, I got to update it everywhere. So self just refers to the class. Uh, but this is Dart, so we say it's static. I guess because different instances are like different representations of this dog blueprint, whereas this is always going to be the same just for the dog class itself. Okay, create functions within functions. I don't want to mess with that right now. So I'm going to skip over that, but just know you can do a lot with functions. Okay. Top level variables. Variables tied to a class. Okay, so this is similar. So a dog might have um, features or attributes. For example, it might have an age. And this is an, uh, an instance attribute. Um, what else did it say? Fields or properties, okay. Um, might have an age and it might have a name. So likewise, we need to have a constructor with int age and name. Does that work? Yeah. But now, so what I've done here is this is a way. Earlier, I was just able to say, give me a new dog. But now that I have these fields here, if I want to use them and initialize them, like assign them values when the dog is initialized, I have to, um, this is like what you call an initializer or a constructor. Okay. So that I have to give it an age now, like it's a 12-year-old dog. It's name is Sam. Okay. Um, Let's change. So when he barks, he's not saying wolf. Maybe in like dog language, he's actually saying, my name is Sam. I'm 12. Yeah. Something like that. OK. All right. String can't be assigned to the parameter of type int name Sam. Oh, I have that. Okay, and the wrong type. Age must be initialized. Maybe it can be null. Maybe that can be null. It's a nameless dog. And somehow I have documentation here. I must have clicked on something. Okay, my name is Sam. I'm 12. <laughs> Alright, the important bit is these are variables. Um, but when they're declared inside of a class, they become what's called fields or properties. So that's just something to know as they, they take on this special meaning. Uh, top level variables um, is something that can be like global outside. So like outside of the, the definition of the main function, outside of the dog class, I can have like var special thing, very special indeed. Okay, and I can I can also print that thing. Like 
one. So this is my top level function, or sorry, top level variable. Okay, there it is. Static and instance variables. Okay, so instance variables with the field properties. What is a static variable on a class? I don't know actually. It's like a class variable. Yeah, so like in uh, in Ruby, you have this double at class variable syntax. I wonder if we use that at much in Dart. Static, let's yeah, Dart static class variable. Let's find out at javatpoint.com. Hmm. About geeksforgeeks.org. Static keyword. Give me an example. So you just say static. Okay, so it's it's kind of similar. Okay. So maybe all dogs get um, um, so each instance of a dog could get an ancestor, but it's always going to be the same. So maybe like we have something like static string ancestor. Okay, and it's just going to be a wolf. It just is. Okay. Um, I'm going to make this optional though. How do I do that? Or like just default. Give it a default value of wolf. Thought. No. Okay. When in doubt, read the error message. Don't get ahead of yourself. Okay. Three positional arguments expected, but two were found. Here's the three it's expecting. Age, name, ancestor. Up here, I only had two. Okay, that's the importance of reading the error message. I think if you wrap one of the parameters in braces like this, it makes it optional. Okay, and because I did an assignment, it's going to be wolf. Um, let's see. Well, I actually like hard coded this, didn't I? Let's give this. Um, It's giving me this new error. Hmm. I don't know, I, I didn't just have that there. Let me get rid. Let me. Let's go back. So before we do this whole static bit, let's just go back to what we had. But this time we're going to be dynamic. We're going to pass in. My name is Noel. I'm Noel. I thought I was saying that you're twelve. Okay, age becomes that, and then you print it. That's that's very strange. Why is that? <laughs> Let's get rid of these distractions and troubleshoot. No more list. No more things are special. We just have a main function. We get a dog. It's an instance of a dog. Passing twelve with Sam. Uh, dog has an age, has a name. Um, we've defined these uh, fields or properties. Okay, and by assigning this, they they should be getting assigned to that thought. There's a bark. That is very strange. 
don't actually know. I don't have enough experience in Dart, but I thought that's what that was. That was like a shorthand. Let me see what happens if I put this into Android Studio. And do project. Yeah, I'll hold off on that. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll have to find out in classes. But for now, actually, you know what? Let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. Um, we'll figure it out after we do this, though. This is our static type. Okay. What we're going to be able to do is say, so earlier we said we had this static function and we called it on the class itself. Now we're going to have dog dot um, ancestor. So that gives us the, uh, the option there to do those things. Um, but dog dot ancestor is just going to return wolf. We actually want to print dog dot ancestor. And it should print wolf. Yeah, right there. Okay. So that that is our um, that's what it called a static property, static instance variable. Okay. Now let's let's say um, Dart uh, da, 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 class. Going a little bit deep, but. Class, we've declared our, our variables. Okay, so that's very similar. Constructor function. We need a constructor function. Dot class constructor. Okay, we're back at the language tour. I guess we can I'll just go into it a little bit. Classes, constructors. It says there's a better way to do this. Okay, so we've had something similar. We had this. We didn't do an assignment here. We did an assignment whenever we nude it up, whenever we created the instance. Um, This dot x and this dot y. Okay, that is what we're missing, I believe. So usually you would say something like so, and I don't think we need that anymore. You'd say this dot age equals age, and this dot name equals name. This is also similar to, to Ruby. We would have like instead of this age and name, we would have like. Um, Matter accessor, so we can read and write from the variable. We'd say age, we'd say name, and then we would say instead of this, we would say at age equals age. Okay, and then at name equals name. That's what we would do in Ruby. But very similar, and we would do that in the initialize method, which is kind of what this is doing. This is the constructor. Okay. All right, so now when I run it, it should say my name is Sam, I'm 12. Okay, cool. But that's it's kind of redundant. Maybe there's some syntactic sugar um, that will get us out of that. Okay, so, so this.age equals age. I think what we can do is just say this.age, this.name. And it knows under the hood that it's tied to these fields or properties. Run it again. Okay. And just to make sure it's actually running and I change the dots for H to eight, change the name to um, 
snap. My name is Snap. I'm eight. Nice. Okay. So I think we fixed that and that's all that's all good. Right? Good. Okay, let's get to that. Unlike Java, okay, so I don't know anything about Java really. I've seen it and I don't like it. Dart doesn't have the keywords public, protected, and private. Now in Ruby we do have protected and private, and it has to do with uh, visibility of the methods um, inside of a class, um, whether it's the class itself or a subclass. Okay, Dart just uses this underscore thing. So like in Ruby, I would have like private and anything under private, you know, some function would uh, would be private. But instead, we just say some function. Um, we're still gonna have this sort of like signature, right? Do something. But it just has that little little underscore guy right there. That's all that means. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Um, identifiers can start with a letter or underscore, followed by a combination of those characters plus digits. What's an identifier? For our purposes, let's just keep that as like a variable. So this could start with an underscore. Maybe. Probably not though. It's probably going to screw something up. Age isn't used. Oh, here. So you could make that. I think that might make that a private method thing, but let's see. And it still works. But you can't start it with like the number three, I don't think. Can you do it after an underscore? Is that what that said? Can start with an underscore, letter or underscore, followed by any combination of those characters plus digits. Non-constant identifiers using lower camel case. Okay, there's something wrong with that. But like we couldn't say three age, like that's not a valid identifier. You can't start with a digit. Yeah, it's just like everything's going haywire. I'm trying to figure out what the heck I'm trying to do. Don't do that. Let's get back to age. Okay. Okay. The important takeaway is that Things can start with an underscore, okay, or just regular characters. That's pretty standard. All right, Dart has both expressions, which have runtime values, and statements. Okay, I think React is similar with this example of like when to use a ternary versus like a standard JavaScript if statement. I think that same concept applies if you have that React background. I think you might know what I'm talking about where it behaves differently using one or the other. Okay. Yeah, so we're calling this a conditional expression because it's going to evaluate and return something absolutely. It's not just syntactic sugar for a longer nested if block. Um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. The statement doesn't still kind of like finicky like what's the real difference the statement contains one or more expressions but an expression can't directly contain a statement Ugh. it's a little thick for me maybe I'm a little thick we'll move on again don't stress out if you don't understand something the first time Dart tools can report two kinds of problems, warnings and 
errors. Warnings are just indications that your code might not work, but they don't prevent your program from executing. Errors can either can be either compile time or runtime. A compile time error prevents the code from executing at all. A runtime error results in an exception being raised while the code executes. This every Dart program requires um, a main function. This is a compilation error. It didn't find a main method. Okay. So that, that's an error. And it was a compile time. Compile time prevents the code from running or executing at all. Okay. So I think I can just like can I just like throw an error. Okay. So this was an error at runtime. I think it compiled the entire program but I explicitly threw an error. So I believe that's a runtime error. And you're gonna see the errors here. The warning in the analyzer shows here on um, dart dartpad.dev, but you may see these, um, like in, 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 um, in Android Studio, there's an analyzer uh, little section at the bottom don't actually have my Android Studio configured right now on this particular account, but uh, you'll see similar things like little infos, little warnings. Um, but these are these are the errors. They're either compile time or runtime. This is what will actually like if you're using Flutter and you have your emulator open uh, or you're, you're connected to a phone and you're trying to run a program. When you see like a, the red screen of death or something, like that's a compile time or runtime error. Um, okay. Yeah, whereas warnings, um, they might not, they might prevent your code from running at all, but it's telling you ahead of time uh, cause it, because of an analysis about your code. Okay. That is, those are the, um, the important concepts to remember. Um, we might skip keywords next time because I don't know really how to like go through and, and talk about keywords, or maybe we'll just do it now. We'll just knock it out. Let's just knock it out. Okay. I think you can... So, so, so you'll see there's a bunch of words. They have superscripts, or not at all. One, two, or three. Let's find out what those mean. Um, if you're new to programming, these might all be the same to you. If you're not, if you have some experience, you might know that var is a keyword, true represents true or false, like it's a Boolean type. Um, async await, these are like little modifiers you can put on functions uh, and function calls to uh, like invoke asynchronous behavior, um, a return of future. Uh, you've got things where like the, the variable is determined at runtime instead of compile time by putting this final thing there. Um, you've got compile time constants, you have this keyword to denote and make a class, you know, like we did uh, over here, we made that class dog. Um, and each keyword is categorized a certain way. So we can have um, special extra properties. <laughs> Avoid using these words as identifiers. However, if necessary, the keywords marked with superscripts can be identifiers. So let's say I wanted to, let's find one here. Final, okay. Let's say I wanted to get rid of all this. I want a variable, it's called final. This is final. Now let's print final. Look, even before we run the program, remember this was from earlier, that's a, a different error. These are the um, 
the analyzer errors that prevent our code from even compiling. We can try to compile it, probably get the same thing. Okay, it's a lot more verbose. Okay. It, it, it thinks we're trying to use final the way Dart intended. Um, it doesn't know that we're actually trying to assign it a variable as a variable. Expected an identifier. Okay. Each time it's expecting an identifier. So actually we can just like blow this down even before printing something just for assignment. Um, okay. It thinks we're, we're using it wrong. We are. It expected an identifier. Final is not an identifier. Okay. Avoid using these words as identifiers. Some of them, the ones without superscripts, like final, you cannot use as identifiers. <laughs> you should avoid them because they won't work. Uh, if necessary, the keywords marked with superscripts can be identifiers. For example, set or part or hide. Okay. Contextual keywords are number one. So like hide is contextual. They have meaning only in specific places. They're valid identifiers everywhere. Okay, so I think I could use hide. Go hide. Okay, we're not using it, but this is this is valid Dart. I have a variable called hide. Um, let me just find another one that I know about on sync show async. Oh, that's interesting. So I could use async as well. Let's just print it to know that we're doing it. Go hide. Okay. That's what async does. Again, um, especially if you're in Flutter, um, you're going to use asynchronous programming a lot. Uh, you're going to use the features of Dart. So you want to, as they say, avoid using these keywords as identifiers. Okay. Number two built-in identifiers. Okay, so number one, like hide and async were contextual. Okay, um, something that was interesting is like async and await are not the same uh, superscript. So that's interesting, we'll find out why. Uh, ones with number two are built-in identifiers. To simplify the task of porting JavaScript code to Dart, okay, this is whenever I guess you're um, uh, ba, 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 ba. to Dart. These keywords are valid identifiers in most places, but they can't be used as class or type names or as import prefixes. So somehow you use Dart and JavaScript. There's some sort of intersection. Um, maybe there's overlap in the type of keywords that JavaScript has. And so you need to like match that expectation in, in your Dart code class or type names or as import prefixes. Okay, so number two, we have like operator. Does that take you somewhere? Ah, okay. Can I assign the word operator? There it is. Okay, so number one and two, you can. Um, they're built in identifiers. They can't be used as class or type names. Class or type. So you can use them as. So maybe you can make your own custom types. Like maybe I could make an Aaron 
type thing that inherits from object. Aaron extends object. Okay. Aaron. Is that valid? Aaron isn't a type. Implements? Is that valid? No. Okay. The other thing it said it can't be was what? A class? Class or type names, but they're all lowercase. That's something to note. So if I said class operator, let's say if it's uppercase, can I say Operator like that? Does that work? Yeah, so that's an instance of the operator class. However, this specifically said they can't be used as class or type names. So lowercase as class. So let me change that to lowercase. All right, now I've got some issues. Ooh, yeah. So now I'm trying to, that doesn't make sense because I didn't have the capitalized one anymore. So now, what does it say? Line four, local variable operator can't be referenced before it's declared. Okay, but what about this? Line nine, this class, The built-in identifier operator can't be used as a type name. Try using a different name for the type. The built-in identifier. There it is. I can't use operator. It's a built-in identifier. Okay. Now, <laughs> this is something I just realized. Class names don't have to be capitalized. It's just a convention. Um, name types using upper camel case. So, I could have copperator. Okay, so now I have a variable called operator, which is a copperator, whatever that is. And this is valid dart. It's not even a warning. It's not an error. It's not even a warning. It's just info. It's like, hey, this, this isn't how we do things here. So, if you wanted to do it, do it the uh, conventional way. Um, okay, that's good to know. Words with the superscript 3 are limited reserved words related to asynchrony support. You can't use a weight or yield as an, as an identifier in any function body marked with async. You can't use async or yield as an identifier. Okay. So they kind of work together. So number three, we have yield and we have a weight. That's it, right? Yield and a weight. Yeah, so number three, yield and a weight. Those with superscript three. Marked with async. Okay. All other words, those without superscript are reserved. They can't be identifiers. That's easy enough. But this a weight and yield, so could I actually use, because I saw I could make a, a variable called async. I can also do one called a weight. All right? Let's get rid of this. Var. Async, asynchronous, var, await, awaiting you. Okay, that's valid dart. Okay, it's saying um, it's not used. That's the info. So if we say print, oops, sync, and print, await. 
those both work perfectly fine. But if we have a um, future, um, let's call this an expensive function, it takes a long time, it's asynchronous. said you can't use a weight or yield as an identifier in any function body ah so actually let's make this a lot simpler okay we have our main function it assigns a variable it prints it Do we work? There we go. Now, as soon as I mark this with async, a weight ceases to be a proper identifier. <clears throat> okay, even so much that it says it's not even used later. Keywords a weight and yield can't be used as identifiers in an asynchronous or generator function. There you go. There's your error. Okay, so overall, don't use uh, keywords as identifiers. That's the take home message. That is the important concept.